earlier in the semester, we had said that the moons of the big planets are a major part of the solar system. Uh, some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn are b as big as the smaller planets in the solar system. And so these are actual worlds in their own right. It, so we, it would not be fair to talk about the solar system without talking about the moons. The uh, gas giants, they have, like I said, these world-sized moons. And so we'll start with talking about the moons of Jupiter and then about the moons of Saturn. Moons of Jupiter uh, were first observed with the very first telescope pointing at the sky, uh, Galileo. He saw that there were little moons uh, orbiting Jupiter. Now, he didn't re refer to them as moons. He noticed they moved around. And if you remember, originally something that moves around, they call a planet. And so he originally cons considered these to be planets. And so uh, f little small planets that were out there going around Jupiter, uh, they eventually began to realize, no, if it goes around Jupiter, it's not the same as something that goes around the sun. And so they started referring to them as moons. Those four big moons are easily seen in a small telescope. And that means that e even little department store uh, refractors often can see the moons of Jupiter, at least those four big ones. Jupiter has a total of 79 known moons as of of uh, as of last year uh, they, they had found uh, 70 79 moons um, and that hadn't changed any this year the uh, moons have four big ones four of these world sized moons and 75 small moons now those small moons in some cases are quite small and as, as uh, our observing abilities get better, we get to see smaller and smaller things. And so there may be more out there orbiting Jupiter. Of those moons, eight of them are what we call regular moons. So that means low eccentricity and low inclination. Eccentricity is how out of round the orbit is, how elliptical the orbit is. And inclination is how tilted the orbit is relative to the equator. Now notice our moon's weird because it has a, a, a pretty sizable inclination. Its orbit is not really that close to the equator. It's really close to the ecliptic. That's kind of odd, but um, at least it's, it's something reasonable. Uh, most of Jupiter's moons are irregular sort of things, meaning that they orbit a very elliptical orbits or very weird tilted orbits, or in some cases we're orbiting the wrong way. And so we believe that these four big moons actually formed around Jupiter, and the other moons may have been mostly captured objects, planetesimals or asteroids or comets or what have you that got close enough to Jupiter to be called into orbit. Jupiter also has a very tiny ring system. Uh, so Saturn was not the only thing with the ring. The ring of Jupiter was determined, was discovered by uh, the Voyager spacecraft. So making Jupiter the very first thing other than Saturn to have a ring discovered. Saturn's rings are easy to see with a very small telescope. I should also point out that Jupiter's biggest moons are so big that a couple of them would be actually visible to the naked eye if it were not for the fact that Jupiter is so big and bright right next to it. Uh, and, and so uh, there, there are some of the, the, the outermost moons are sometimes visible in binoculars even, uh, very low magnification uh, and very low light gathering. For the longest time, we knew nothing about Jupiter's moon. So I made this graphic uh, a few years ago, so it's not completely up to date. But uh, uh, what we have here is no moons known. The Galileo looks at Jupiter and he sees moons. And he only saw four moons. So for a long time, that's all we knew were those four moons. And then a fifth moon was discovered, another moon, another moon, another moon, and so forth. And so... Uh, 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 oh, oh, by, by the time you get to the 1900s, uh, it became, you know, every few years or so discovering a moon. And then finally, with the uh, Hubble telescope being able to scan and look at very, very tiny little specks, then in, in the last couple of decades, this giant spike in the number of moons that were seen. 
should point out an interesting thing here that uh, early on that they found eight moons around Saturn. So Saturn has one really big moon, kind of like Jupiter's big moons, and then about seven medium-sized moons, and then the rest are very tiny moons. Um, so eight moons around Saturn, four moons around Jupiter, and one moon around Earth. That actually uh, led... Uh, uh, um, Johnson Swift to propose that maybe Mars had a couple of moons and that was actually before they were discovered and so a lot of people make a lot of that it just happens to be that he saw a pattern there 8421 uh, that was just purely uh, circumstantial uh, certainly if he had lived a little bit later they would have known about more moons around Jupiter here and so that didn't really that didn't really fit as I said before, some of these moons are the size of planets. So Ganymede, which is the largest moon of Jupiter, is kind of between Mercury and Mars in size. And even our own moon is not that much smaller than Mercury. So our moon really is the size moon you normally would find around one of the gas giants. Again, I've said before, our moon is weird. Uh, of the inner planets, Earth is the only one with a sizable moon.